Hello and welcome to our online worship for the third Sunday of Lent. My name's Jo Neary and I'm the team vicar in the Beminster team. It's really good to welcome you to our worship today. We've been starting our Lenten journey. Uh, I wonder how you're doing. Well, actually, not even starting. We're well continuing by now, aren't we? Um, we had a lovely time in St Mary's Church on Sunday as we had a time of uh, reflection and music together. This was inspired last year by the fact that we do carol services, um, but we don't do anything in Lent. Um, so what we've done, uh, what we did, in fact, was put together some readings about waiting for God. So we went through the Old Testament and then into the New Testament about waiting with some poetry as well. Uh, and then Peter, our organist at St Mary's Beminster, threaded in some beautiful music on, on both piano and organ. So we were really, really uh, thrilled to have a good number of people there and everyone found it a really good time of reflection. I wonder if you're enjoying the Lent course. Uh, that's carrying on. We're going to be meeting uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Those are the ones I'm responsible for. Tuesdays in person, Thursdays in the evening online. Um, and you can join in if you want to. Uh, it'd be lovely to have you. And then our next activity is on the 17th of March uh, and it's going to be a theological discussion uh, led by David Campbell. So uh, do join us then if that is something you'd be interested in. What else has been going on? Well, I was taught, I always, I'm always taught by children. Um, we were doing, we were thinking about being still in worship today and, um, and how we calm ourselves and how important it is to sometimes just have that, those moments of rest and reflection. And I asked the kids how they calm themselves down and some really interesting ideas around being outside or playing a game, doing art, stroking their pets, uh, cuddling up to something soft, uh, things that we might do well to remember in our adult life. Um, and then we shared the story of Mary and Martha, which you'll know, won't you, of Mary and Martha, two sisters, both friends of Jesus, and Martha with that kind of urgency and impatience and frustration around having to do everything, and Mary grasping that one of her jobs was to sit at Jesus's feet and learn. Um, it's a tricky story, actually, I find, because Jesus very firmly sides on Mary's. It was Mary's choice. And I think uh, as a probably a more of a Martha, I'd find that slightly tricky. Um, but I was asking the children what they thought about it, what they thought about Jesus's response, how he might they might feel if they were one of the sisters. And um, and this little girl put her hands up, which must have been about seven or eight. And she said, you know, the problem is, Reverend Joe, that, uh, you know, Martha shouldn't be cross because what you are supposed to do with Jesus is talk to him. And if she's too busy doing everything else, she's not talking to him. So she just needs to stop, sit down and talk to him. Bingo. I just was so touched by her way of saying, you know, what you're supposed to do with Jesus is talk to him. So there's a, a kind of seven year old viewpoint on what a prayer life should look like. <laughs> so that's kind of really rung in my heart and my mind today. What you need to do, you know, what you've got to do with Jesus is talk to him. So I hope your talking with Jesus is going well in your prayer life this Lent. Uh, we're firmly back on the rhythm of contributors, which is fabulous, makes me feel so happy. Uh, so Patrick Evans is leading us in a reflection on today's reading and Angie will be leading the intercessions for us. So let's prepare to worship God. Grace, mercy and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We sing our hymn.
we come to our time of penitence. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. We keep a short silence as we bring our sins before God. We pray, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. We pray the Collect Prayer for the third Sunday of Lent. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. We listen to our reading. Our reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then they said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Patrick leads us in a reflection on this passage. Gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Christian children all must be mild, obedient, good as he. Those thoughts frequent in childhood and gently reinforced every year with Christmas carols, contrast with the picture of Jesus in the temple from this morning's gospel. There is nothing like a good bit of anger with Jesus to set us thinking. So we hear that Jesus turned the tables over and drove out the temple scribes and priests for exploiting the pilgrims who were encouraged to come up to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. It was financial abuse of those who really had no choice but to buy what was being sold and pay the price demanded. The temple priests had a monopoly on supplying unblemished lambs for the Passover meals. And it is this exploitation with money changing hands at exorbitant rates that Jesus criticizes when turning the tables on them and a good whip of cords as well, get out. His action was politically powerful, religious dynamite, conflict is building. This angry Jesus, not shy of likening one of his closest friends, Peter, to Satan, furious about injustice on a number of occasions and neglect of the needy. 
And yet Jesus goes silently to the cross, apparently. He does not condemn his accusers. He does not get angry about his treatment at the hands of the mob, the Romans, the Pharisees. Surely this is absolutely when his anger should have justifiably uh, flared. So what are we to make of such contradictory messages or seemingly contradictory messages? When is anger actually justified? How handle meekness and mercy? Handling our emotions from gentleness to anger and every emotion in between. So welcome anger, not least because a person incapable of anger is so often incapable of experiencing anything more than the most basic of human emotions. Human anger can be seen as a powerful emotional reaction to real or imagined, physical or emotional damage, injury, or I suppose displacement to oneself or others, whether individuals or communities. Anger is with us, part of our deep humanity. Is my anger justified, righteous anger? I'm not talking about minor fed up feelings, nor passing crossness, the too easily offended, the irritations that keep reappearing, though many of these don't pass and may need to be addressed. Action is sometimes needed, otherwise it becomes corrosive. I remember being so impressed by Desmond Tutu's Truth and Reconciliation Commission and meeting two South Africans who had been involved with it and changed by it. Better to reconcile, to change hearts, our own even to be changed, to listen, to walk in others' shoes. And the world, of course, needs to hear all this. An angry world becomes an unsafe world. An angry world is not filled with any of the gifts that make life feel worthwhile. Angry individuals who are so caught up in their corrosive anger, and anger too, that destabilizes nations. Anger that is about revenge seems to lead nowhere. I'm at the moment so disappointed with the growing lack of civility in both public and personal life. So pretty angry with terrorists, with Putin and company, with some political and personal behavior by those in power and influence across the world who are concerned for themselves and not as I see it, the common good. I'm angry about the plight of refugees and the slaughter of innocents. I'm angry on behalf of the wronged. And I'm sometimes angry with myself for not doing much about it. Then I realize that and write a few letters or perhaps do some voting or even persuading, but you can't solve everything. Much of course is anger mixed with disappointment and sadness and shock and confusion. My own lack of understanding of another person or of a world situation. If we look at good, righteous uses of anger, there are so many positive examples that have encouraged responses for the good. You remember Bob Geldof's fury that drove him to live aid action over starving children. William Booth, seeing the awful conditions of Victoria working folk that gave rise to the Salvation Army. Martin Luther King and civil rights. Nelson Mandela, using his anger to fuel the eventual successful challenge to apartheid. There are numerous examples worldwide in our own communities and within national life. And also those precious personal moments with those who are closest to us. Anger caused by frustration, injustice, unfairness, indifference. Here lie the seed beds for action, private or public. Our batteries are recharged for a greater involvement. Perhaps we might learn to disagree with a greater sense of courtesy and understanding. So come back to Jesus. We deny his humanity if we pretend that he did not experience all those deep emotions that we know and learn how to handle our anger, to use it for good when it occurs. And we all know it's not an easy path. Some prayer, reflection will never go amiss. Caution over acting hastily. Anger provides us with the energy, of course, to seek the truth. 
a source for good, how to improve the situation that has caused our anger, be sensitive to injustice, don't deny anger, and let's not be afraid or embarrassed to share things with a friend, and that friend might include, well, perhaps should include, this God who knows the secrets of our hearts and is always ready to absorb humanity's pain and anger. So be it. Amen. We affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Angie leads us in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you promised through your Son Jesus Christ to hear us as we pray in faith. Father, we pray for purity and holiness in your church. Keep its focus on saving souls, not money. Let us use the space to worship you be strengthened by your word and filled by your Holy Spirit. May we give as our means allow, out of love and with joy, not through fear or with a grudge. Let us meet the challenges and changes of our times with faith, hope, love and trust in you. Bless those who minister to us who teach and pray for us. May they be filled with the never-ending supply of your love, grace and hope. And we pray especially for David, for Joe and for our partner priests. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have mercy on a world where profit is more important than people the love of money, more sought after than the love of goodness. Drive out these false values where the wealthy become richer whilst the majority become poorer. Teach the spiritually poor, rich people how to share their wealth and be happy. Lift the oppressed poor, fill them with your Holy Spirit Enable them to rise up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our local community. May businesses prosper for the goodness, strength and benefit of others. In fair dealings, in growth and employment and in provision of service that is good and is needed. Bless the work of the unpaid heroes who give freely of their time and of those who give generously out of their resources. Be with those who would like to offer support but have their hands tied by the need to earn money and take care of family. May they know that they too are valued and loved and that love is never dimmed by position or occupation everyone matters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, or for those who feel unworthy or unwelcome in church, may they find their health, worth and welcome in Jesus. May they look to him who is the temple and receive his saving grace. We pray for the departed, who have worshipped in this world, have died with Christ and have been raised up with him. 
May they rejoice in the heavenly temple, where he is the eternal light. We pray in the name of Christ, who drives out all that is evil. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We gather our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us praying. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We pray for God's blessing. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. Take care, stay safe and we'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.